As you all know, this morning I'm going to offer the empowerment of the Kondo Tutte, which is the empowerment of the Western Dakini Shintonias. Before I begin the ceremony, and I'm going to give brief introduction, which is also part of the ceremony. A cordial lineage introduction, there is always like an introduction, part of the what means empowerment and what is the the Western Lucky Nation Soja. And where this teaching comes from? All those are discussing as introduction so that we can settle our mind and so we can actualize these blessings and empowerment. In order to begin this, of course, always important. Always in the teaching said, as you all know, the motivation is so important. The intention is so important. This time, intention, we have so many intentions, such as all teachings by Brother Shakyamuni. I mean, summarize those all teachings into three intentions. Negative intentions, positive intentions, and neutral intentions. Among all those three intentions, this time we're going to igniting and increasing other beautiful virtues, positive intentions. What is a positive intention is this time joy and appreciation and a devotion. <coughs> let release all the doubt and hesitation, analytic and intellectual ideas. This time is not. We are going to merging and engaging and deepening ourselves to this ceremony, to this part of the practices without interference and obstacles of the dualities. As I said, doubt and hesitation, skepticals, this and that, all those, these things we should put on the side. What we need to bring up, as I said already, joy, devotion, love and kindness and compassion for all sentient beings. And joy, the first joy, Joy is so important because we have every reason to be joy. As the Buddha said, I'm sure you heard so many of these things from the great teachers. Not just a hear, we should observe that, we should stand on that. It's true, it's not just verbally kind of talking, blah, 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 blah. This is not really that blah, blah. It's true. We should, since it's true, we should reflect this. Brahma more joy. We have the 18 endowment qualities, first step. We have 18 endowment qualities, not just human beings. We have that 18 precious richness qualities that we have. Truly, we have that. Therefore, we should have joy. The second joy, this time, we are connected to this great teacher, the Western Dakini Shin Soja and Guru Pema Sambhava. It's not just for accidental, we came here, gathered this and that things, but truly we connected. That means, because of this connection, we are going to reveal our Buddha nature, our goodness God, and that will be good for now, good for the future, good for all the time, not just only ourselves, but we are going to make goodness to every living being. We have beautiful vision, gold, as a brilliant sunlight, the shining that in our heart, going to bright every our path in every direction, not just only all the living beings, wherever we contact. And then, then as well as everyone. This is the what we begin. This is the journey we begin. This is the step we are taking. Therefore, we should make great joy, bring joy and appreciate. How wonderful, how beautiful, how this is important. I'm going to make this something special, meaningful that will reflect to myself, reflect to the others, truly in the heart and mind. That is joy. And then devotion. This is again precious teaching. It's not just uh, again we kind of like experimenting things, but truly it is lineage teaching, precious teaching. It aspired, it bought the full benefit, the result. So many enlightened beings, or so many great practitioners, one after another. Not just is happened once in a while, but truly it happened. Today we engage into this path, that that technique. We are holding that. We have a path following that path. Therefore, pure strong devotion. This is not just a teaching came today, just happened here. It's a continued past teaching, lineage teaching. 
Therefore, all those great masters, great prophets, who preserve this teaching as their breathing, their heart, with the full of joy, full of love, and full of compassion, full of precious and inspired, enlightened being, that means bring up the joy, peace, happiness, and both joy and peace, happiness to every living being. How wonderful, how beautiful, how precious it is, how special it is. Today, I'm going to this. How wonderful. Feel strong, dear Feel strong, rich in the scholars. That is what we need. With this, then, now we go. And then also, same time, think of this all compassion. Compassion is the essential teaching of the Buddha Shakyamuni, no matter wherever it is. Whether it's a Hinayana teaching, whether it's a Mahayana teaching, whether it's a Vajrayana teaching, compassion is so important. Feel great compassion, love, and kindness, Thought for all the living beings. We're not going to exclude anyone by our ego clinging and our grasping thought as Monday worldly usually we do. Today we're going to bring everyone and wish everyone will be benefited by this. Sincerely feel from that heart, from our mind, from our bone, from our breathing. Really feel that truly to everyone that we like to bring them joy, peace, happy, remove all their difficulty, troubles, suffering, whatever they're going through, whatever they're experiencing, whether they're in, those, in this earth or whether they're beyond the galaxy. We are going to feel that to everyone to bring them joy and peace, happiness. The same desire that we have, we like to be even better for them. That is known as the greatest teaching Buddha Shakyamuni in his teacher, the Buddha Shakyamuni is teaching, Bodhicitta, as you all know, that we should feel so sincerely, strongly. Then truly we are standing beautifully on the, our principle of the Buddha nature. From there we begin this ceremony. That is foundation. That is ground. That is the way we are standing. Tall and strong and firm. From there we are going to capture the, our beauty, our knowledge, and our blessings that we are going to receive, or the blessings that continue to pass. So with that, understand the beautiful foundations. Now we talk about where this teaching comes from. This is. Again, of course, you all know, but this is what the lineage teaching says. Because it's not just our night develop the things as an experiment, things or claiming something, but it's long last the lineage teaching as a natural. Continued from Buddha Shakyamuni 2,600 years ago, continued until now. Everyone who connected to this teaching with love and joy and devote, courage and commitment, they fulfilled their goals. This is not just a story, it's true. So many beings, one after another, truly they become the true love, true compassion, true wisdom, true peace, harmony, respect and appreciate, not clash, clash with the ego claiming that I'm more important than you, that this and that. That ego trait is completely gone and bring genuine quality of love and kindness, respect and appreciation. With that, so many purpose practitioners reach to the highest realization as Buddha Shakyamuni himself. That is, that's the teaching today we connect again. We already connected. It's not something that we are not. We are connected. Today we are deepening, we are strengthening, we glorifying that beautiful qualities, that beautiful teachings, that reflect beautiful example that outside and that beautiful example and inherit that we have. Both God joined together, we are going to glorify our beautiful natures. That is why. So therefore, this teaching comes from Buddha Shakyamuni. Buddha Shakyamuni reached the enlightenment at 35. After he reaching, he is reaching as in, at, uh, enlightenment at age 35. And he turned the veil of Dharma that benefited to all the sentient beings, as you all know. From age 35, at a few days ago, according to Vedic history, the Buddha gave the first teaching for noble truth teaching. The truth teaching, not false teaching false or the kind of deceptive teaching. It is true, therefore it's called the truth. It is noble because it's truth. Truth is noble. There is nothing higher noble, nobility than the truth. That's the what Buddha gave these teachings, full noble truth teachings. From that on, until, until age 81 or age, age 80, Buddha continually gave the teachings, all the different categories and the different levels of the teaching, those teachings are divided as you all know. 
no as then the the Vinaya teaching, Sutra teaching, Abhidhamma teaching, or in Vajrayana teachings. Those are just roughly divisions that summarize entirely his teachings. What are these old teachings? His teachings are teachings of wisdom and compassion. All that teaching, no matter it is a teaching on the Vinaya, it is the compassion and the wisdom teachings. United together, never separated. Every Sutra teaching, that is what it is. Teachings on the wisdom and the compassion. Every Abhidhamma is the teachings on the wisdom and the compassion. Every Vajrayana teaching is the teachings on the wisdom and the compassion. Where this wisdom and the compassion? The teaching tells that, but actually Buddha point inward to our heart, to every nature of our, ours. Our love, our compassion, our wisdom, how we should ignite, how we should glorify, not let it trap in the duality and the fabrication of the grasping and habit patterns. That's what the Buddha told. Continually, all those teachings, what the teachings is. Among all those teachings, today the teaching is connected very much to the then Vajrayana teaching. It is teaching of the Mahaya Vajrayana teachings. In Vajrayana teaching, within there is like many also two categories, but first they divided subgrouped as two: the outer tantra, inner tantras. This teaching belongs with the inner tantras. Within the inner tantra, there is different terminology used. In some new schools of Tibetan Buddhism, used mostly as like father tantra, mother tantra, and the neutral tantras. In the new schools of Tibetan Buddhism, used as ancient school or the mother schools of all the Tibetan Buddhism use the terminologies as Mahayoga, Anuyoga, and Akiyoga teachings. Among that three teachings, this particular teaching is more connected to the Anuyoga teachings or the Mother Tantras. We together with the essence of the Mahayoga and the essence of the Akiyoga teaching. Combine together that teaching. This is the Mother Tantra teachings. This great teaching came to Tibet, as you all know, in the 8th century. The full teaching of the entire Buddha teaching without any partialities. Whole entire teaching came to Tibet, Tibet in the century by gracious kindness, compassion, and inspiration of the King Tsum Deity, Great Master Chandarachita, and then Guru Pema Sambhava, second Buddha Guru Pema Three of them brought entire teaching to Tibet without any kind of partiality or without anything leaving behind. Tibet become the richest Buddhist country on this earth. According to the history, according, we can read the monument, legacy, teachings, still existence. That. And among the Tibet, there's teachings, and then as continued, I'm sorry, a continued this teaching, spread it and Benefit so many things from the 8th century until now, but among that then schools, there's many different schools that developed in Tibet Buddhism, and all our Buddhism, all our Vajrayana teaching, all our great teachings, great teachings, among that, then this teaching belongs with the Nyingma schools of Tibet Buddhism, which you all know, the mother schools of the Tibet Buddhism, where, from where every Tibet Buddhist schools developed spread it out as like as branch and leaves and fruit and a flower as that developed beautifully developed that among that this is the Nyingma schools of Tibetan Buddhism the Nyingma schools of Tibetan Buddhism continually carry the teaching through two different channels two different lineage two different methods those are known as the Kama and the Therma as we all how many of you already know Kama means order, long last lineage. That's something continued as the normal ways, regular way. Teacher, teacher gives the teaching to the student, they practice, and they, they actualize the realization of that teaching and share it to the other, continue the one after another. That is Kama in the Tibet, which means, I translate roughly, the order, transmission, long last lineages. It continued from the 8th century until now as unbroken long lasting flowing as like rivers, like river Ganges or river Mississippi, continually follow that. And then there is a second lineage teaching, which is known as Dharma teaching, which is a special hallmark, spiritual legacy of the Ngurupi Amma 
Tema is very special, something that extraordinary benefit activity that ex kind of expanded and reflected from the beneficial activity of Angora Pema Sambhav, known as Therma, hidden and rediscovered. Something magical, something mystery, something beautiful, something amazing teachings. That, that contains the also essence of the Vajrayana teaching, essence of the old entire Buddha teaching. It's nothing but out the range of the Buddha teaching. Within the Buddha teaching, it is what? Because the Buddha teaching is true. Is natural, is simple, is honest, is love, is compassion. There's nothing need to go. Gorapema Sambhav, therefore, he is the one of the great lineage holder and the masters of the Tibet, of Buddhism, entire Buddhism. Within that state, but he used his skill to expanding to long lasting of the teachings, and known as Dharma teaching, as many of you know. There's many great Dharmas who came one after another from the ninth centuries until now. So many, all toward the end of the 9th centuries or the beginning of the 10th century, so many great techniques came. Great individually, enlightened beings, showed up as in the teachings, that as like blowing up from those meadows, the mushrooms blown up from the meadows. So many great masters come, one after another, those techniques. They brought all those legacies and teachings of the Gaurapema Sambhava and this great Western recognition. Their teachings they brought out and share. What are those teachings? Generally, the teachings are mainly connected with, with the three Anatantra, Mahayoga, Anuyoga, and Atuyoga teachings or combinations or represent them, all of those three Anatantra, each of those things. But basically, all those teachings again, one after another, continue, continue these teachings. And this among the many teachings, many of those great things, and then later on, those great such masters, such as the two brothers of the Mandolin, Mandolin schools, and as was the Ongjin Pass, Rongzong Pass, and the great masters, just the Mahon Ramboji, they merged, and it was great Kuntra, great intensity, they merged the Kama and the Therma teaching as two big river joint together, one distilled, clean, beautiful, authentic river of lineage that inspired and benefited so many beings. Merge, they're not kind of like two separate things, merge together. That. And so the, among those all the teachings, this particular teaching is belongs with a great Tetu emanation of the Domi Chechung Lhasa or emanation of the body of the of his holiness discovered covered by the great Tetu, his holiness, Dunjuru much modern time, we call his holiness because we traveling a lot in the Western country and our prince said his holiness. So his holiness, Dunyu Jabrachi Dod. Or in other words, in Tibet we call the Jabji Dunyu Rumbuchis, the Supreme Lord of the Protector. Protector. Protector of all beings, the His Dunyu Jabrachi Dod. He was a great Tetum, great master, great teacher, great poetry, great, great writer, and great thinker. Yet he is so simple, so ordinary, so humble, just as we are, like, like just a simple person. This great master discovered so many great teachings, one after another. In others, among all those teachings, this is the one of his supreme therma teachings, supreme teachings, known as essence of the Dakini drops, heart drops. In the teachings, said his own Dojo Rumboji, Body is the emanation of the Dovi Chechen Lhasa. His speech is the emanation of the Western Dakini Yishin Soja. And his Western mind is the emanation of the Guru Pema Sambhava. Three individually enlightened beings come together as one simple, beautiful beings, humble beings, the who was born in the southern Tibet over 200 years ago. And this great teacher, then, as he said, brought so many of these teachings. So many teachings. He became the true lineage holder of the entirely Nyuma schools of Tibetan Buddhism. He became the masters of the, all the Nyuma practitioners, particularly who came out of the Tibet in the sense of the 1959s. And, and heard the communist pressures and their powers who came out. He, they become his teach, his, their teachers. This is known as His Holiness, the new. 
He gives so many of these teachings again and again, so many connected students and so many beings around the world. And among that, I was one of those students who also received these teachings. And as I received this teaching, I'm sharing to you, to you that. And then I received also this teaching empowerment from my beloved teacher, Kenji Pardesharanamud, many times, again and again. Again, so all those great teachers give me this teaching as I receive, I preserve it with joy and devotion and devotion and bodhicitta with humblest ways as much as can be given. And with that attitude, with that thought, with that nature, I'm offering you this, this empowerment. So this is a brief history of the lineage. Now we talk a little, little bit about the who is Western Rakhinishin Soja, as you all know, but again, it's a part of the lineages. Yeshim Soja can understand in many different ways. Absolute level, we Yeshim Soja under, can be understood, and the relative level, Yeshim Soja can be understood. Absolute level, Yeshim Soja.